Hi, this is the Bible Touchstone, continuing here in a video series, Preterism and Church History. In the last video, we introduced some of the teachings from early church fathers, and the reason I'm doing these videos is to contend for the legitimacy of full preterism, because one of the attacks against full preterism by contemporary futurists today is that since the early church fathers lived in such great proximity to the apostles and received their teachings directly from them, then they should have had some firm grasp of eschatological themes. So the things that they say should be regarded as orthodox because since you know they had the apostles as their teacher, perhaps privately, if it is true what full preterists say and claim as to the nature of Bible prophecy, as already being realized, then it would be true that the apostles would have privately told the early church fathers about these things, and so that Irenaeus and some of the early church fathers could have relayed that message to the rest of the corporate body of Christ, the church. Now, we're going to look at some of the particular claims of some of these early church fathers in this video, particularly Irenaeus. Now, Irenaeus, as well as nearly all church fathers had at least a systematic theology that included a future expectation of the reconstitution of material corpses of each independent believer. That is, in the future, though they were regarded as resurrected already in a spiritual sense, Generally, there was still an expectation for something else to happen. Even though they were regarded as having a full salvation then, there was still a material redemption that had to occur, or a consummation of, or restoration of the cosmos and the universe. A material restoration. And some of these themes work in a sort of dialectic with some of their contemporary concerns against heresies from Gnostics and others. Now, I introduced Irenaeus in the last video, where it says, He granted those who follow him and serve him life and incorruption and eternal glory. Now, some of these statements as for the perfection of believers, their incorruptibility, and so on, a lot of these kind of claims are not taught by futurists today. So we're going to take a look at some of these claims to show some of the inconsistency with these early church fathers. Now, it's not necessarily that they're inconsistent, but some of the futurists today who appeal to these early Christian fathers to discredit full preterism don't even share some of the same doctrines that were taught by them. Now, continuing, Irenaeus says, man has first come into being, then to progress, and by progressing come into manhood, and having reached in manhood to increase, and thus increasing to preserving, being glorified, and thus see his Lord. For it is God's intention that he should be seen. And the vision of God is the acquisition of immortality. And immortality brings man near to God. Now it's generally agreed by Christian, especially Christian futurists, or nearly anybody, and also preterists, that belief in the name of the Son it, by God's grace, gives and grants immortality. That is, it ushers eternal life by what he has done. It's a gift from God, and that is realized by the believer today. But, even though this immortality is apprehended, it's still regarded as incomplete by futurists, it, because they still need a material body to be resurrected. Now, also on this, Irenaeus posits a doctrine of um, a sort of suspended place where believers go until the resurrection of the body, before they meet God face to face, so to speak. But continuing on some of these things, on preterism it says, It was necessary that, that is, the weakness of mankind's nature, should first be shown and afterwards be overcome. Overcome, like First John talks about how, since we are begotten of God and we know God, we have overcome the world. And it also says, and, Im and mortality be swallowed up by immortality, corruptibility by incorruptibility, and man become conformed to the image and likeness of God, having received the knowledge of good and evil. 
Now, Irenaeus has a very complex doctrine on this becoming conformed to the image and likeness of God. This is central to his idea of glorification and perfection. And this, he believed, was still being realized from the work that Christ had already accomplished in his first appearing. Now, particularly I wanted to focus on the statement, mortality be swallowed up by immortality and corruptibility by incorruptibility. Because here it is a direct allusion to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, especially verse 4, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15, especially verses 53 and 54, where it says that Paul, he was talking in the context of the resurrection of the dead, which futurists regard as still a future. But here, Irenaeus sees this has already been realized in a glorification that was already apprehended. Now, he goes on and on and on about, in his writings, about this being conformed to the image of God, this sort of restoration, and this is called the end of man's perfection. So this is all it really took, even though he also believes that there's still a corporate or a sort of body, a physical material body that would still be needed, they, he still regarded them as glorified or perfected even before that. So he goes on, and here's another verse or thing that he says, he was incarnate and made man, that is, God was, Jesus. And then he summed up in himself a long line of human race, pouring out for us comprehensive salvation, that we might recover in Christ Jesus what in Adam we had lost, namely, the state of being in the image and likeness of God. So this sort of, this sort of glorification or perfection is very similar to what full preterists believe when they talk about how we have been changed. We've been changed from one creature into a new creature or one body into a new body. Being This mortal body has been changed into an incorruptible body or we have put on incorruption. We have put on Christ. These are things that full preterists talk about. Now, continuing, Irenaeus says, God, the Word, restored in himself his ancient handiwork that he might do to death sin, strip death of its power and give life to man. He also says in another place, Already we receive some portion of the Spirit for our perfecting in our preparation for immortality as we gradually become accustomed to receive and bear God. This is what the Apostle calls first installment or being sealed by his Spirit, which dwells in us even now spiritual and thus our mortality is swallowed up in immortality and this comes about not by getting rid of our material body but sharing in his spirit so even though this is a futurist statement from Irenaeus he regards passages that are alluding to the resurrection of the saints associated with the Parisi of Christ, or his appearing in second coming, that those passages, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15, as already being realized, even in that first installment, even though they haven't had their material body yet. So, these are the sorts of themes that when the futurists today say that the first century fathers never spoke of the things that full preterists speak of, well, these are the sort of things that go against that claim. As always, grace be to you.